Standing just below the city of Wortland, Kentucky, stands a historic home built by John McCletchen McConnell. He was born on December 25, 1790 in Cannonsburg, Washington County, Pennsylvania. He was born the son of immigrants from Londonderry, Ireland. He attended Washington and Jefferson College and was at first apprenticed to a shoemaker. Not liking this kind of work, John ran away. He was later apprenticed to a tailor. At the conclusion of his term of service in 1812, his employer, being satisfied with his work, presented him with a horse, saddle, a pair of saddle bags, a suit of clothes, and a sum of $25. After riding his horse to Portsmouth, Ohio, and then on to Greenhamsburg, now Greenham, he would later venture to Woodford County and then to Prestonsburg where he taught school and studied law under Robert Walker. On December 10, 1817, he married Lucy Bragg Lewis of Carter County. They would have four daughters and one son. Returning to Greenham County, he spent the rest of his life as an attorney and an influential state representative and senator reputed to have considerable gift for oratory. The house, which was constructed in 1834, preceded a number of significant events in American history. Sam Colt would patent his revolving pistol one year later. The siege at the Alamo would occur two years hence. The Mexican War itself some 11 years in the offing. The Civil War was 27 years away, and the Indian War loomed more than three decades in the future. Andrew Jackson was President of the United States, and James Fenimore Cooper was in the midst of writing the Leatherstock Tales. Beyond the house, there stood a cannery, an explosive manufacturer, an early railroad line, and a river landing, a large impressive hotel, a dairy, a Civil War camp, Camp Swiker, and a prison where still lies the graves of soldiers in unmarked graves. In September 1833, McConnell purchased 230 acres of land from Abraham Buford, where he oversaw the completion of his home for his family the next year. The complexity of the construction and the style of the home clearly indicated that McConnell surely brought in professional designers and builders of the day. The fires from four large chimneys heated to 21 square foot rooms, and the foundation is cut out of stone, laid together so that no mortar is necessary at all. The house is built with bricks made on site by slave labor. In 1834, three weeks after moving into his completed mansion, 44-year-old John McConnell died of unknown causes. He was buried on the point of the hill across from the house. Upon his death, his slaves, who quartered near the adjoining hill and served as McConnell's farm workers, removed to Greenup, where the descendants dwell to this day. In 1847, Three brothers, George and Samuel Grandin, and William Works came to Greenup County from Connellsville, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, to engage in the iron ore furnace business. With them was their sister, Ann Works King, and her husband, Benjamin King. The Works family built the Pennsylvania furnace in 1848 and the Laurel furnace in 1849. The family lived at Laurel which they operated for 20 years. In 1857, George Wirtz and his wife Mary purchased the McConnell house from the McConnell heirs for $8,000. During this time in the house, George Wirtz converted the McConnell house law office into the first private one-room schoolhouse in Greenup County to educate his children, as well as the children from other families in the area. Wirtz died March 10th 1869 and the house was sold on the steps of the Greenup County Courthouse where it was purchased by George Wirtz's son-in-law James Davis Biggs and his wife Sally Alice Wirtz Biggs. James Davis Biggs was a farmer and a timber merchant originally from Louisville. During the Biggs family time in the McConnell house he had become a hub of social activities among Greenup society. The Biggs family's two daughters were married in the house, married to Harry H. Rennick in 1898 and Sally to Sturgis Bates in 1899. From there, the house and 300 acres was sold to John Harris of Old Town for $10,000 in the year 1907. Harris died in 1933, thereby passing the house down to his three sons and daughters. 
His daughter, Addie Harris Chin, bought out her three brothers for a sum of $8,000 in 1935. Heir to the property, Grandin Chin sold the property to Amtrak for $225,000 in 1989, and Amtrak in turn donated to McConnell House and the 1.06 acre track that it stands on to the Heritage, Arts, Science, and Tourism Center in 1991. The house is operated as a 501c3 nonprofit and is staffed and operated by volunteers and a volunteer board of directors. Before we go into the next room, just take a note about the room in which you are standing. This was an area in which visitors were welcomed into the house. Unlike today, where we often just come into a personal area of the house we are visiting, guests had to wait until they were invited to proceed further into the study or the living room. This was the most formal room of the house where guests were received, courtships conducted, and business discussed. The living room fireplace was made out of carved black marble. The woodwork, transported by ox teams from the dismantled 18th century Columbia Hotel in Louisville, was meticulously finished by a unique feathering process that resulted in a fine wood grained appearance. The fireplace surround is carved out of marble. The north wall contains pictures of the McConnell family and many of their descendants. The pictures on the far right is the four McConnell daughters which were taken in 1860. The picture on the far left is of Mrs. McConnell taken after John's death. On the west wall is a copy of John's handwritten will. This room contains a copy of the certificate placing the home on the National Register. To the left of the certificates is a plaque listing our 15 corporate sponsors who help us operate and maintain the home. The plaque on the right is a list of supporters who donate at the patron and benefactor level. The pictures on the north wall are of the Harris family and their descendants. Each room of the original structure is 21 square feet and has a fireplace. The four rooms in the back which make the house an L shape were completed after Mr. McConnell's death. As we enter the dining room, you can see the thickness of the wall where the walls were opened up for the doors to the new addition. The dining room, which was added to the house when the additional four rooms were constructed after Mr. McConnell's death. The large cabinet holds dishes which were donated to the house several years ago. The current inside restroom was previously a pantry. Food items like flour, meal, molasses, and sugar would have been stored in the pantry by the kitchen. This plantation farm was almost completely self-sufficient in producing all of its meat, chicken, eggs, vegetables, fruit, and dairy products that it needed. The kitchen has been modernized enough to function for the house events and rentals. You would have contained a wood-burning stove as well as a cast iron sink sitting on four legs and primitive cabinets and tables to use as work areas. Now let's go out back to the entrance foyer and proceed up the stairs to see the bedrooms, the educational exhibits, and the travelers.
the upstairs hallway. This small area would have been used as a sitting area for only family members. It is also the entryway to the upstairs porch, which would have provided an observation area overlooking the great lawn in the tree-lined lane leading to the house. This room would have been the master bedroom. The light fixture is original to the house. It was an oil lamp, which would have hung over the dining room table. It has been modernized and wired for electricity. There would have been a bed, a dresser, and an armoire. Notice the lack of closets in the bedrooms. The armoires or clothing presses were used to store extra clothes, but they did not have the amount of clothes even in the wealthier households that we have today. The treadle sewing machine was owned by Harriet Augusta McFerrin Harris, who occupied the McConnell house from 1907 until her death in 1923. During the summer months, Harriet sewed on the upstairs landing, catching the summer breeze. She created clothing for her six daughters, as well as household linens with the machine's straight stitch, adding lace work and fancy stitching by hand. The machine passed to her daughter Florence, who continued to prefer this machine to the new electric models. Florence passed the machine on to her niece, Joe Harris Brenner, who donated it to the house. The gold dress is a wedding dress that was worn by Fanny Warnick when she was married to Elwood Kinner in 1894. The blue plaid dress also dates to the 1850s and was worn by Rebecca King, was related to Benjamin King and Anne Works King. This room would have been the bedroom for all the children until the addition was completed. So that meant there would have been four girls and one boy sleeping here. Often babies would still be in cradles in the master bedroom. There might have been a few toys due to the wealth of Mr. McConnell, but nothing compared to today's children. It is being set up as an exhibit for long ago landmarks. The first exhibit constructed is of the Eastern Kentucky Railroad. The large display on the east wall was painted by Dr. Tim Decker of the Russell Middle School Art Department. The Kentucky Improvement Company was chartered in December 1866. The railroad ran from Riverton south through Argolite, Honeywell, Grayson, Willard, and ended in Webville. The railroad had eight tunnels and are probably unpassable or have been flooded. The north end of the Argolite Tunnel can be seen from Kentucky 207, where it curves around to avoid a hill that the tunnel passes through. The display features the Blue Goose, a passenger car regular transited the rails. The display on the north wall is an educational exhibit constructed by the Argolite Elementary students. This group also functioned as the robotics team named the Flippity Floppity Robotics Team. It gives the history of the many iron ore furnaces that existed in a time long gone and shows pictures of the furnaces and examples of iron ore, coal, and actual pieces of pig iron which would have been transported to Pittsburgh to be made into steel. The other displays coming soon will feature expansions of the King Powder Company display on the south wall the Raceland Racetrack is also featured with a small display also on the south wall. This room is a work in progress. The furnishings are from the late 1800s and reflect a time long past. Note the rocking baby cradle and chamber pot. This is a unique room to the house. It's the traveler's room. This room is connected to the rest of the house only by the outside. Its purpose was to provide a safe, clean resting room for people who were passing by, traveling by riverboat or horseback. It also provided free lodging for the night for any traveler. It is furnished as it may have looked back in the mid 1800s with furnishings of a bed which dated back to the mid 1800s, along with a nightstand, washstand, and chest. 
There were no accommodations at the time like we have today with Comfort Inns and Sheridans. Access to the attic is also gained from this room. Inside the attic, there's a large barrel-like tank that was used to store water. A windmill off the side of the porch, which was later blown over in a severe thunderstorm, set in motion a pump which drove water up to the attic into this barrel-like tank. A pipe leading through the attic window and out the side of the house prevented an overflow of the tank from flooding the ceiling below. The basement holds an ice and water filled stone vat to serve as a storage place for the milk and butter designated for fairly immediate use upstairs. The floor of course would have been dirt with cement added much later. Nearby remains a small brick building, originally McConnell's Law Office, that was converted by George Wirtz into the very first one-room private schoolhouse in Greenup County. It is furnished with items that might have been in the early one-room private school. Note the water bucket and dipper. The flag over the teacher's desk, which had 32 stars, which would have been the flag displayed in 1858 when Minnesota was admitted to the Union. scale house for weighing cattle was dismantled for safety. Reconstructing this landmark is the last item to be completed in our restoration plans. The floor on the far side of the scale which was used to weigh the cattle before doing a cattle drive up the river to the railhead for shipment to market. A two-door brick building which stands in the back of the house is listed in the National Register of Historic Places as a slave quarter. It functioned as both a wash house and a coal house in later years. The wash house will be furnished with items reflecting its use as a wash house in early times. It was restored during the recent Phase 3 